ten. Right. Okay. Now this will be covalent since they're both nonmetal. Yep. Okay. So prefixes. Mm -hmm. um, and so since we have more than one of the first one, that means I have to use a prefix for it. That's right. Okay. So then I'm going to say we're going to have tetraphosphorus. That's right. Tetraphosphorus. Now let's see. Ten. Ten. Ten is deca, isn't it? Deca. That's right. Okay. Like a decathlon. All right. Deca oxide. Or to facilitate pronunciation, it's just deca oxide. Oh, that's right, because sometimes we drop the vowel in there. Yeah, because right? it just seems kind of awkward. Okay, so it'd be deca oxide. Right. So I just erase that A like that. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't really come up all up all that often, but you know. It's to be aware. More of an English convention than chemistry, but. Oh, well, English. Anyway. Fantastic language. Let's work with this one. MnCl2. Yes. I've never seen MN before. Which one is that? Well, a lot of people will say it's magnesium, but that's Mg. Oh. Mn is what's called manganese. Manganese. Manganese, yes. Okay. And then, of course, we have Cl. Okay, so manganese, is that just a regular metal then? Not quite. It's actually one of the transition metals. Okay. So it's going to need special treatment. Okay, so that was it. I work backwards. Mm -hmm. This is going to become second nature pretty soon. That's good. So we have a negative one charge for the chlorine. Right. We have two chlorines, mm -hmm. which is a total of a negative two charge. That's right. We have only one manganese. Right. Which has to equal a positive two. That's right. So I'm going to say manganese two chloride. Right. Okay, cool. And I have to make sure not to forget those Roman numerals because if I could see how that might be easy on the test. Certainly would be. Manganese 2 chloride. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Moving on. Xe. Xe. Isn't that xenon? That is xenon. That's a noble gas. It is a noble gas. So, how come? I mean, I always thought that noble gases never bonded with stuff. Well, that's usually the case, but scientists have been able to synthesize xenon compounds, and so they're actually pretty common now, especially on your tests. Ah. And so, yes, it is entirely possible to do that now. Okay. All right. So, how do I name that, though, if it's a noble gas? Well, it's a noble gas. It's obviously a non-metal. Mm -hmm. And then it's paired with another non-metal, so you name it just like any other covalent compound. Oh, okay. It's actually pretty easy, then. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say F is forming, so mm -hmm. xenon tetrafluoride? Right. All right. See, that wasn't too bad. No, that's just kind of tricky. Yeah, I mean, you're just not used to seeing xenon in a compound. Oops, I forgot my prefix. Man, Ooh. I say one thing and write another. You have to be careful on those tests, yep. huh? Tetrafluoride. That's right. Fluoride. That's kind of weird to smell. To spell F-L-U-O. Yeah. So. But what are you going to do? I guess. All right, so... Chemists are crazy. <laughs> I'm fine so good, him. He's crazy too. He's crazier though. Anyway, this is getting nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have aluminum. Yep. That's a, let's see, that's just a regular metal. That's a regular metal. Okay, that's cool. And then, let's see, so we have two nonmetals together. Mm -hmm. So he said that's probably a polyatomic that I need to know. Yep. Okay, uh, my m memory must be fading me. Do you know what an L3 is? That's going to be nitrate. Nitrate, okay. So if I name this, it's going to be, just like we did the sodium sulfite, it'll be the aluminum nitrate. That's right. Okay. No prefixes or anything. I like the ionic way of doing it. Just the metal and the non-metal, smushing together. Simple, right? If you say so. Okay. And then, bear in mind, when you have like more than one of the polyatomic ion, you're going to need those parentheses, uh, and so okay. that's why they're there. That's this parenthesis, three outside the parentheses, is basically saying you have three nitrates. Okay. So a total of three nitrogens and nine oxygens. That makes sense. All right, now we go on to this one. Okay, Si is silicon. Mm -hmm. Si is silicon. Br is bromide. Bromine, yep. Okay, um, so Si, let's see. Now, it, I know that on the periodic table, Kevin, there's like a stepladder thing. Yeah. It separates the metals from the non-metals, and mm -hmm. there's like metalloids or something. That's right. Isn't silicon in that range? Yeah, that is correct. Silicon is actually considered a metalloid. Mm hmm So, it may be tricky to work with that, but for the intents and purposes of naming, we treat metalloids as if they are non-metals to name them. 
Oh, okay. And so you're just going to use the regular, you know, prefix system. So we'll have silicon, tetra, since mm -hmm. there's four bromines, tetra bromide. That's right. Just like that. Just like a regular covalent ah. compound. You know what? This gets really easy. That's good. Yeah. If more practice means you're getting more used to it, and then you pretty soon you can just name things right off the bat, like, oh, I know what that is. That's right. Done. Yeah. Cool. All That's right. pretty nifty, and so... Hopefully, you benefited from this practice today. Most certainly. Thanks for your help, Kevin. Yeah, no problem. Alrighty. See you later. Yeah, we'll see you later, too.